Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For this week's video I have been working on the most lovely black Labrador. Her name is Betty and she's a stunning girl. I have such a soft spot for black Labradors um, or any black dog in general really but her eyes just yeah they, they just won me over. A topic that I wanted to cover in this week's time lapse is my journey so far um, to being a full-time artist. I have quite a few people who message me or who have messaged me over the past asking how I have become a full-time artist and um, sort of like my career path so I just wanted to just run through it really. So hopefully I will be able to maybe encourage, maybe inspire because it's not an easy ride. I found it very very difficult i still find it quite difficult sometimes it's been a hell of a roller coaster but if anyone can take anything from this then i'll be very very happy so i will start off by saying that i don't come from an artistic background my parents are both quite corporate people my dad's ex-navy my mum works for a firm of accountants um, I wouldn't say they thought art was wrong, I guess they just didn't really understand and especially for me to branch out and say I want to be a full time artist, it wasn't something that they were ever that okay with at first just because obviously running a business is very unknown, especially a creative one. So I started off my journey which I know I've spoken briefly about but the, the main reason why I really got into art was because I was suffering quite badly from anxiety and it, it definitely pushed me towards being creative. I find art really calms me down and makes me feel very mellow and very chill and it definitely gives me a distraction. I think as long as I'm doing anything creative then I'm really really happy and art is definitely my happy place so I'm very very fortunate to be able to draw and create artwork which essentially makes me happy and I know makes quite a lot of other people happy too especially owners of sort of the the animals that I am commissioned to draw so yeah I absolutely love it I'm very 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 fortunate to be in the position that I am in but it's been a bit of a roller coaster. I have had several jobs before pursuing my career in art and they started, I mean, I, I sort of had the, the average Saturday job and sort of working at a coffee shop and things like that. But my first full-time job was at Citroen, um, which is a car dealership. I'm very, very local to me. And I started working here because I had essentially failed my A-levels. Um, I'm really not academic and I think exam stress and the pressure just got to me completely. And yeah, I, I just really, really didn't do well. So I finished my first year and that summer at college in the UK, we get quite, well, I got quite a big summer break. So I applied for some jobs and on the off chance, I handed a CV in at a local Citroen garage and they employed me to do their admin and marketing. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed being in the workplace. I had absolutely zero experience, but I just went in to answer the phones and sort of help with a couple of the events that they were holding, new car launches and things like that. Absolutely loved it. And I thought, right, this is it. I love cars anyway, so the motor trade is gonna be my career path. So from there, I went and got a job at Mercedes-Benz, which was a much bigger corporate environment. And I really struggled. I think it takes quite a certain type of person to work in that sort of male dominated workplace. And I think I lasted about six months until I decided I just couldn't cope anymore. And I actually went to night school whilst I was working at both Citroen and Mercedes to study marketing further because it was something that I was quite passionate about. Again, I think it was because it was creative and I liked sort of like the visual side of advertising and marketing. So um, after I left Mercedes, I was really stuck. I was thinking, oh God, what am I gonna do now? And there was a lot of pressure on me. I was sort of 19, 20 years old. And yeah, I think at that time I was still, a lot of my friends were at university. So I decided to apply for uni to study marketing. I think I made a decision on the basis that it was seen as possibly the right thing to do. As I said, everyone else had gone to university, everyone else I knew and was close to. So I applied and I got in on basically on my work experience um, because as I said, my A-level results were rubbish. So 
After that, I mean, I, I did really well in my first year of uni and I, I enjoyed it. It was it was a very small university I was at and it was fine. But I think the reason why I did okay in my first year was because everything that we covered, I'd learned in the workplace. So I could apply everything to the workplace and yeah, I did, I did fine. However, when it got to second year and that's when the pressure started because in first year it was just a bit like, yeah, whatever, you know, we just had to party. Not that I ever really went out and partied, I don't drink. Um, but when it got to second year, that's when the pressure really hit. And I think after about halfway through my second year, I was I was really, really, again, really unhappy. I was really not academic, really, really struggled with the exams and the pressure that I felt I was under to perform. I've always been quite a people pleaser. And for me, you know, success, I wouldn't say success is defined on how well somebody does. I don't know how anyone could ever define what is successful but I think I genuinely I did I really didn't do well and I think it got to about halfway through my second year and I was very aware I was racking up a lot of debt being a student and I was really worried that I wouldn't come out with any job opportunities um, or that a degree just really wouldn't help me in the workplace because at the end of the day I'd been fine without a degree I was just filling a void or filling some time felt like I guess I had a bit of FOMO like fear of missing out because all my friends had gone to university I was thinking oh god I don't want to look back when I'm like 30 and be like oh why didn't I go to university but I had halfway through my second year and I sat down with my senior lecturer and I said look I don't want to be here I don't I don't like the course and there was talk about sort of moving moving courses and I was like well no because it's more years of debt and more years of studying which I really don't enjoy in the first place and he said okay well what else do you enjoy doing and at the time I had a very small portfolio of um, some sketches and things like that which I'd shared on Facebook over sort of previous years and I remember over that Christmas break talking to my parents and being like look I'm really really not happy at uni I, I really would love to pursue a career in art and my anxiety and ex especially my fear of failure had really gotten the better of me and all I wanted to do was sit and, and draw and I remember several weekends that I just did I literally did that I just sat in my room and just sketched and sketched and sketched and I felt like it gave me a bit of a purpose it let me clear my head it let me sort of vent a bit on paper but my parents were really reluctant as I said they like very corporate and they didn't understand the principle and why anyone would sort of want to sit at home and, and play with colored pencils all the time I mean it took bless her it took my mum years till she stopped calling them crayons and I wouldn't say they didn't take it seriously but I think they thought it was a bit impossible like running a business and having a business is so unknown for them and for me at the time and I was thinking well I can take a year out of university and still hold my place so maybe I can just give myself a year and work really 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 hard and if it doesn't work out then that's fine I will rethink so that's what I did I took a year out and I really tried to build a portfolio I was posting all of my work onto Facebook and onto social media and set up a business page and it slowly began to gain traction it wasn't an overnight success I had so many failures I will talk more in detail in a future video oh, absolute roller coaster ride that I've been on with my art journey and sort of the, the mistakes that I've made because there has been a lot however it hasn't left me completely broken it did in the past that's why I sort of really really struggled to get going with my art career because I think I was so scared of putting my work out there for such a long time I sit and compare myself to other artists and the thing is there's two ways of looking at it I think you, you've got to look at other artists work I think to get some sort of inspiration whether that means going to an art gallery whether it means going to the Tate Modern whether it means you know just just looking at other artists on Instagram we are now in a society where it's so so simple to see what other people are doing see what other people are producing and almost get slightly envious of how we perceive their life to be the work that they produce however i feel like there's um there's definitely like with instagram and, and social media there's a need and a strive for perfection a lot of people's work is realism we all just seem to do realism and very little abstract art because realism is the thing that looks the most polished and looks the most presentable however it's not always right uh, and again i want to talk in future about some things that i've learned in my art journey um, to do with realism and 
how it hasn't always worked, especially in terms of sort of trying to branch my career further out there or work out there. Anyway, that aside. So I've been an artist for about four years now. I gave up my evening job that I had for several years while I was at university and while I was setting up my business. I haven't looked back. Every month is, is different. Every month, you know, some months are really good. Some months are very difficult. Some months, I, you know, you think, oh, you know, I haven't really got that much work going on. How am I going to make ends meet? And it's not always simple. I think a lot of people perceive could might perceive they see as i said the most polished finished lives on instagram and just see it and think oh you know i want a career where i can sit at home and draw every day you know don't get me wrong it's it is amazing and i'm very very fortunate to be in this position and i think you know for me as i said i was very very scared of when i was starting out i was striving for perfection even to this day that's why it's taken me so long to to get my act together and start a youtube channel because even though i had so many people asking me for it i was a bit like i haven't got a good enough camera or i haven't got the right editing software or i haven't got the the right lighting and you know you can go through and you could spend thousands and, and thousands and getting all the right equipment the most important thing is just, just start. No matter where you are, if you want to be an artist, if you want to be a creative person, if you want to be a filmmaker, if you want to be a podcast, if you want to do YouTube, you can do anything very, very simply. I mean, if you want to be a YouTuber, you could literally film a video on your phone and upload it. It's that simple. You don't have to have the best coloured pencils to be able to produce work. I think the point that I'm trying to make is that everyone starts somewhere. Everyone, we, I had to start somewhere. We all have to start somewhere. You can't expect anything good to happen overnight. It doesn't. And if it does, you're very, very, very fortunate. And that's incredible. And I'm so happy it's worked for you. But for most of us, it's taken a long, long time of graft and a lot of mistakes and I just think that as long as you're getting your work seen, you're getting your work out there, don't be scared, don't be afraid to post your work. I think we live in a society now where it's so easy for people to judge. And you know, I was, for example, I'm very, very used to now posting my artwork online, but there is so, so much. I know I keep saying this, but there's so much I want to talk about social media because I've learned so much in the past few months about how detrimental it can be to people's health uh, and, and especially to my own health. I mean, at the moment, I, I spent last night, for example, cutting and culling a lot of the apps that I've got on my social media. I've put all my social media apps into one folder and I've put them to the last page of my phone so they are not the first thing that I click on when I open my phone, I don't straight away go to Instagram because it clutters my head. It, honestly, like, I, I see other people's lives, I see other artists' lives, I see work that other people are producing and it's such a distraction when actually the most important thing that I should be focusing on is the work that I'm producing. And you should be doing exactly the same. It doesn't matter where you are in your art journey. As long as you are creating, that is the most important thing. In terms of your journey to being a full-time artist, in all honesty, it completely depends on your personal circumstances. I knew that I could never give up my day job or give up university and become a full-time artist overnight with no extra money. I had to work. I worked an evening job. I mean, I say it was an evening job. I ended up working about 30 hours a week at the pub. And third time, I built up my portfolio online and posted on Facebook, posted on Instagram, and very, very slowly started getting commissions. And when I first started, I was charging 40, 50 pounds. It took me a while to feel confident enough to build up to being able to charge more. And over the years, and as I said, it's taken me four years to get to the place where I am now i'm still very very new at running a business it's still something i really struggle with there will be a video coming soon where i talk about being an artist and also being a, sort of like a business entrepreneur because i think that the two are very very difficult to mix if you're a creative mind it's very very difficult to be a business person too i find anyway so it's it's definitely a video that i want to talk and a subject that i really really want to touch on in the future but for now, I think as long as you're getting your work out there and you're promoting yourself in, in the way that you deem fit, whether it's set up a page on your Instagram or a page on Facebook, 
like as long as you are posting your work you can keep it completely private you don't have to tell anyone or don't actually keep the account private but you don't have to tell anyone that you're doing it and then slowly over time you will build a following you will get people who will be attracted to the work that you produce there is plenty of people there's plenty of clients for everyone there's plenty of clients for the top 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 artists in the world who can charge hundreds of thousands of pounds for their work there's also a good client base for those who are starting out too so do not be afraid to charge for the work that you produce obviously you can't expect to become an artist tomorrow and start charging thousands as i said you'd be a very very lucky person if you could do that anything takes time it takes graft but as long as you're committed and if you're passionate about art I promise you it will come naturally to you. Anyway, I will stop rambling now because I think I've been talking for about, yeah, <laughs> about 20 minutes. So I really hope that you've enjoyed watching this time lapse. I hope that I've managed to cover a little bit more of the, the ins and outs of being an artist. But please do subscribe to my channel. Um, I really want to make some content referring to a bit of the business side of, of being an artist. I want to try and create some content that will actually help people within the business because it's something I'm really passionate about and I hope you will join me on my journey. Thanks for watching. Bye.